steel frames and precast buildings have a lot of similar benefits. That's why it's a debate between which one to choose. So this is a battle royale between steel frames and precast buildings. So which one will win? My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Let's go with the first comment of why people want to choose either between a steel frame or a precast building. What's really to do with reliability? You see, the problem with on-site construction is you're delayed by how the weather is. If it's a hot day, you may be delayed. If it's raining or other effects may slow down your construction. Where if you go with a steel frame structure or a precast building, you can do a lot of the fabrication offsite. For example, for precast buildings, you can have rigs inside a building where you can pour concrete, doesn't matter what the weather is. So it allows you to have a more controlled environment and have a better product in the end that is not affected by weather. Similar to steel frame buildings, you can fabricate parts of the building together, having things already installed before it's coming to site. So it allows you to do a lot of that fabrication before coming to site, as opposed to that in situ design. So there's better reliability between choosing one or the other. So what is the drawbacks here though? With a steel frame building, you can just bolt it up and it can be stable straight away. With precast, you need to have joining connections such as grout beds and dowels, which need to be grouted up. So sometimes you need to temporarily pop the precast building as opposed to the steel frame building. Where if it's a steel frame building, you may need to clad over it, where a precast building can be finished as soon as it's put down. Now you may be thinking of things like floors. However, both in the precast and the steel framing, you still need to pour a concrete slab to make that floor integral. So there's no real benefit between doing that steel framing or precast design. So which one wins? This one, reliability, it's a draw, as there's benefits and drawbacks of choosing either of them. But they're both definitely more reliable than an in-situ or stick frame solution. How about the next factor that typically drives our decision? Now that is cost. Cost has a high factor of which one to choose over the other. Now, depending on which element you're choosing, there's definitely benefits for using one or the other. Sometimes if you're doing a precast wall, It'd be cheaper to have the walls and columns. Things like floors can sometimes be cheaper underneath the steel solution due to the reduced size. So for cost, so the precast becomes more finished, however there's a little bit more work lifting and putting in place, where the steel needs a little bit more additional work to have it finished off. So for this case, again, it's a draw. There's benefits or drawbacks for either, but depending on where you are in the world, sometimes precast will be the chosen solution, but other times steel will be. Construction time is also something that's a big driver of these different types of solutions, sometimes even more so than cost, as the quicker you can get it finished, the quicker you can sell it, and the quicker you can get the money back in your pocket. If there's a lot of changes within your design, precast can be quite expensive. However, most of the time, if you've got a symmetrical structure going up, you've got walls positioned on top of each other, you don't have many transitions or transfer floors. It means that you've got a lot of replication and a lot of repetition. That's really where you get the benefit of precast design. So if you get a building with a lot of repetition, you can build it really quickly. Most of the time, it's better to have most of your design as precast to reduce that construction time. So the winner here is precast design. Environmental sustainability is gonna become more and more relevant as we move into the next century. So which one is more environmentally suitable? Is it the steel solution or is it the precast? For example, precast is heavier, so it takes more time for it to get to site. And overall, there's a little bit more embodied carbon in your precast solution, both due to the weight and the way it needs to be installed. So typically steel will win out here, however it's only just and by a marginal basis. And it really depends on where you're getting energy from and what type of steel you're using. Because you don't necessarily need to always mill it out of the ground to get it in place. However, you can reuse and melt down and reuse steel sections. So the winner here, ding, 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 is steel. How about aesthetic appeal? This can be also another factor that helps drive your decisions. Where steel, it just goes into place. It doesn't really have that cladding involved with it. So it's only the steel frame. Although you can make connections look nice, it still needs another features to make it look more appealing. But a precast is not just a structural element. You can put designs in your precast building to make it look more appealing. As soon as this goes down, it has a more aesthetic appeal. So the winner here for aesthetics is definitely precast. How about on-site construction? As this can increase the cost, which one's gonna be easy to install and build? really depends on where you're putting it in and what aspects you have. Typically, steel is a lot more accessible. You can move it into places. You can stick it up in different areas. You don't need heavy machinery to lift up pieces into place. It also means you're not restricted by the access to the site or the crane that's lifting up your elements, as you can build it in stick framing and put it together on site. So it makes it more versatile in this situation. Whereas precast is heavy, you need big trucks to bring it into place. You typically need big cranes to lift them up to the top of the building and put them into place. So it's really limited based on what crane you have access to and side access to allow that trucks to come up into place. There's also additional complications of having to prop it. So after you put it up in place, it's not always stable until the other elements are around it. 
So definitely the winner here for constructability is steel. Following on to constructability, and you probably know the answer here, transportation. Transportation, the definitely winner is steel. Due to its lightweight nature and being smaller, it's a lot easier to transport to the site. You're not limited by what access you have or the access to the site, as you can build it in small parts. But precast needs to become in big slalom elements to make it efficient. So it means that you're limited based on the trucks that you have, side access, and how it can get from the precast yard to the site. So the winner, 100% here, is steel for transportation. Durability for both fire and long-term aging is definitely something you need to consider when you're choosing between your steel or your precast solutions. As typically when you put a steel frame building together, you need to treat it for either external use or the environment that's around it. As it's not untreated, it can rust and degrade over time. For example, steel, to put into place, you either need to treat it for fire with either a protection layer around the outside or intermittent paint, or sometimes you may need to hot dip gel it to give it the characteristic age that it needs to achieve. Whereas precast, it pretty much becomes as durable as you need it to be. You just increase the covers of the reinforcement and you increase the durability of your structure. So the winner here is definitely precast design as it already comes with the durability required and doesn't need additional treatment. How versatile is either the steel framing or the precast? See, precast can be used in a lot of situations and it can just be finished as is. You can have it as a floor, roof, walls or columns. Where a steel frame typically needs additional elements attached to it to make those work as a specific function. For example, if you've got a roof, you need to have rafters, purlins, and a roof sheet on top. With precast, you can just put the precast down on top and it's already stable, provided it's within the given range. Similar to walls, you may have a steel frame in there that's really efficient, but it still needs cladding on top of it to finish if it's a steel frame building. Where precast can have its finished solution as soon as it goes down. So for versatility, precast is definitely the winner here. So which one has the better space saving flexibility? Is it either the steel framing or the precast? We see if you have a precast, it's typically a solid block. So you can't cast services in it. You can't put services through them. So typically you'll need a ceiling space and have the services run beneath them. Whereas steel, it's normally more flexible that you can put holes through it and allowing you to achieve the penetrations needed for the services. So typically you can have the steel framing and the services within the same zone. So definitely the winner here is steel framing as it allows to have the services and the structural elements within the same zone as opposed to beneath it. So typically you can have a shorter structure or thinner structure using a steel frame building. The other one that may make a decision between one or the other is its ability to resist sound or transmit sound through the floors. A lot of time people complain, especially in high-rise buildings, that floor transmission of sound is really annoying. If you have people living above you, transmitting the sound through, that can be really irritating. For example, walls. If you've got a wall between two areas, you may not want the sound to go through that element. Now with steel frame buildings, you typically need to put another element in between it. As it's really thin, it doesn't have enough mass or density to resist the sounds between them. Where a precast wall or a precast floor already has that density within it, and if it's thick enough, will help prevent the sound transmit through the structural element. For sound absorbability, the winner is definitely precast in this situation. And lastly, about design flexibility. We're always talking about trying to make buildings architectural. So which one's gonna give you the biggest design flexibility? Example, precast design is very rigid as it's heavy and typically means things need to be aligned. You don't really want to have offsets as it creates transfer structures that make it really expensive. There's also limitations on how thick a structure needs to be. As concrete is normally not as efficient, it needs to have thicker designs. So for design flexibility, steel allows you to have a lot more greater flexibility, have those bigger spans, have that more ornate structure. So for design flexibility, a steel frame solution is definitely the winner. It allows you to have that out of facade, it allows you to have a thinner structure, it allows you to come up with those really thin elements cantilevering out, making it look like it's almost floating into nothing. Now, I'm sure you can see off to the side of which one's the winner, either that steel frame building or the precast design. I didn't keep track. But if it's never just one or the other, a lot of times it's a combination of both steel framing and precast to get to the right solution. Maybe depending on site access, transportation, and other factors depending on which element to choose. And it's about choosing the right element for the right situation. So despite them having one winner, both will potentially be the best solution for your chosen design. And if you're interested in learning about more of the rules of thumb of either concrete design or steel design, I'll link to the videos here. That's to give you more insight about which one to choose. And if you're interested in supporting your channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either do this through the YouTube membership or through Patreon. And without the support of either my Patreons or YouTube members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.